What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Bedivere and welcome to another episode of Zero to Hero. In today's episode, we are gonna be diving into our factorial playthrough. And today we are gonna be building our mega base scale plastic bar setup. So as always, if you enjoy the content, be sure to smash that like button, click the subscribe button as well if you haven't already. And that little notification bell down there at the bottom keeps you up to date with all new content that comes to the channel. If you have any comments, tips, tricks, suggestions, or you wanna roast me in the comments down below, of how poorly I'm building my base, feel free to do so. Any and all criticism is welcome, constructive, positive, negative, or otherwise. If you want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one content, feel free to jump into my Twitch chat. I stream every Thursday and Sunday afternoon at twitch.tv slash bedivere. All the links to all my socials, including Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram are in the description down below. Go ahead and give everything a follow. And with that, let's dive back in. So in the last episode, we left off with um, constructing our stone brick smelting setup. Uh, we still got to have some modules in there and everything like that. But, um, and we also added some more some more mines, right? We added uh, this iron mine. Or I might, no, I, I did that off camera, I'm pretty sure. We added, oh, we added these ones. This is the one that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, thinking about we added these three mines right here this iron stone as well as the copper mine right there uh, as well as these two copper mines right here uh, that we added uh, we're going to need a lot of copper a lot of copper mines and i also did this oil setup this beaconed oil setup which is mis missing a little bit of modules but we are actively constructing more and more modules uh on the side or not on the side but um in the background that's what i meant to say in the background we are constructing more and more modules but uh, I've chosen a place um, already where we, where I want to build our plastic setup. So plastic needs, it needs coal, it needs petroleum, and by, by uh, not coincidence, what's that word? Um, I don't know, someone's going to mention in the comments, by happenstance or whatever, I don't know, a, a synonym for that. Because of, because we need uh, petroleum, we need water for the, um, for the oil refining, right? So we need a place that has good access to water. So we have, you know, this little lake here, um, but that's going to be, you know, taken up and probably landfilled in by these, uh, two smelting setups. We got this long stretch of land, uh, with water. We even have some coal here. Um, but I do want to save that big like i mean it's a big like big building area for something that's you know a really big build um so what i did was i found a place that had a little bit of you know the best of both worlds it had some space had some expandability um and it was also I'm, I'm talking about here right right here i'm talking about here so we have we have some native oil right here that we can help supplement um our trains right so we can mine this or not mine but drill this oil as well as train it in and we can find a way to maybe um prioritize this oil over the oil that's being trained in um not sure exactly how we're going to do that we can we can figure that out by ear but we also have water coming in here which the water might be far we might need to add another station like a water station for uh for everything but i digress i don't think we will need it you know with pumps and everything like that we can keep the we can keep the flow going pretty um pretty strong but as always i designed this um this setup i designed this setup in our uh stream playthrough so if you haven't followed on twitch yet go ahead and do that and you'll be able to see kind of us designing our our mega base scale setups uh over on that twitch stream so what we have here is we have you know an entrance here for the stacker as well as for the depot here's the depot here um and then we have a an exit here for all the trains that are coming out so it's a, it's a nice it's a cool little um it's a cool little setup and this i think can keep on going and we can have another stacker going down and mirror it on the other side and have the plastic go on this side so what this does is this build produces eight full lanes eight full blue belts of um of plastic bars because the ratio of of like belts to plastic bars is almost 
two to one, two coal to one plastic bar for every. So the reason, the way that I do this, I do a lot of my bases in terms of full blue belts worth. So like 45 units per second. So I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at our factorial calculator and I can put a screenshot up there uh, on the screen for you guys. 45 plastic bars uh, per second requires 17.308 coal per second and then 346.154 petroleum. So that, that petroleum number is the big number that we need because um, if I click on the plastic bar, it actually shows the direct the direct uh, amount of products that we need of each. So that expanded window is, is exactly what we need uh, directly for that product. Um, and I got everything moduled, everything uh, speed beaconed. Um, so we only need two refineries that we see here. And then I've got a, it's hard to see right here, but this is a, a heavy oil to light oil. And then I got three light oil to petroleum fracking and you'll see in that uh spreadsheet that we need 3.1 light oil to or light oil to petroleum fracking and i only have three uh just to save space but i think that like since we have two full refineries going that 0.6 extra can probably compensate that extra petroleum that we need um you'll see you'll see the belts like it produces 45 and then like once a minute it might like you might have one space or something like that and you'll you'll see what i mean um but in general terms it's about 45 give or take okay so what we're gonna do is i added i added the the output uh lane right here already just so that it'd make the the copy and paste a little bit easier so actually let's not right click let's left click go over here and paste it down let's look at our map yeah that works okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set all the um all our needs right uh i don't think we're gonna need too many underground belts if i'm not mistaken so let's take that out let's only do about 200 uh 2k regular belt yeah sure uh splitters yeah we'll need that we will need uh refineries we're gonna need two times four which is eight so let's do, just do a stack of those let's do um where are the chemical plants i'm missing them i know i am am i chemical plants where are they? oh my god come on someone just yell it out yell it out for me in the comments oh here it is um okay so we have four chemical plants per row and we have four rows right Four rows, is it? Uh, four rows of two, so it's times two. So this actually is uh, four. So I might need two stacks of this. So this is four times four, which is 16. Yeah, two stacks of this. And then four times eight is 32. Okay, so 40. 32 of those. We're going to need a bunch of pipes. Bunch, bunch, bunch of pipes. And a bunch of undergrounds. Let's go the full, full of that. And then we're going to need beacons. So you, my friend, uh, no, you got that. Logistics, let's have you request the beacons. Uh, let's have you request, let's go with 300. 300 beacons. Let's see how much what you end up getting uh yeah you got the 300 cool all right so we got the 300 beacons we got that we got the pumps which is good uh do i need water pumps i don't think i do okay all right let's uh let's get going uh we're gonna bring this all the way down now let's just see if there's anything else that i need to oh no 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 no, no. we also need um if we're gonna do the local oil, we also need one of these guys here. Probably the last one. This guy. Oh no, I can probably request it. Uh, let's get 60 pumps. That's three stacks. Yeah, let's do that. 
Okay, now we can go. We got power poles and everything. Yep, we're good to go. All right. So we're going to go all the way to, um, to here. We're going to have our bots start building everything. Um, I'm going to do it like my other videos. I think I'm going to build everything and then come back and start explaining it. Um, and then we can, we can watch, we can watch the show. And then depending on how much time we have and how much time it takes to explain everything and set everything up once it is built, uh, depending on that, we might, might want to add a couple more, um, oil mines as well as regular mines. Ooh, and we also probably need to switch out this thing. Uh, we ended up in the last episode, uh, you know, like I said, finishing this smelting and I want to bring in stone and stone brick on their own separate trains. Um, so let, we might need, we might want to do that at the end of this, uh, at the end of this episode, if we do have time, um, but I'll keep an eye on the clock. I will let you know when we're back. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain the blueprint once, once it's all said and done, because it is a lot easier to explain it and what exactly it is with it all built. That way I can just kind of walk through it with you guys. So I'll be back. I'll see you in a minute. All right. So we are back here. Uh, these, we got all their, all of our things built. We've got our trains. Uh, the trains are set to depot plastic circuit condition green signal equals three just like always we do our three checks supply demand and make sure that the lane ahead of us is empty meaning that the train ahead of us has already left um then it goes to supply plastic then demand plastic of course supply plastic is not ready yet and demand plastic i don't even think that we have a station named that yet um it's just the the blue printed stations but you see here that we have everything set up and we're taking four belts of coal for each thing and if you wanted to look at the entirety of like what it what this entire thing needs so one full plastic belt needs about 0.4 um 0.4 belts of copper ore it's 17.3 right however these th the each of these columns here takes in one full belt but produces two full belts of um of plastic bars so we got one belt coming coming in here of the coal whoa whoa, whoa. i don't want oil yet uh it's, that's fine if, if oil comes it's not a huge deal i don't have the water yet to even to even make it matter okay that's fine sorry i got a little distracted i was like no don't start yet while i'm while i'm explaining everything um okay so you see like one full belt 45 per second of um plastic bar like i said produce or requires 0.4 belts of uh coal 1.4 refineries uh, 0.9 or one chemical plant and 3.1 chemical plant for the uh light oil to petroleum cracking now so you see here that we doubled that on each side. We got the one, one full belt instead of one half belt of coal coming down right down the middle, right down the middle of everything and being consumed right here. And then we have two on each side, two, um, two refineries with, what is this? Uh, I think it's 16. Yeah, 16 beacons, each with two speed modules on either end. And they both go towards the middle. So you see here, the middle here, uh, that's the petroleum being pulled together towards the middle. And then at the very end, the petroleum is what's here. Let me, let me go on foot real quick and put on, um, put on my, my speed shoes, my speed shoes. Um, and then we got petroleum coming down here towards the middle, splitting into two and then going into each of the, uh, chemical plants right here with the coal using underground belts uh to go underground and and bypass all the power poles um each of the chemical plants have the production modules tier three we got three of them in each and then each of the chemical plants also have four beacons or eight modules you know two per beacon uh affecting each one so we got one two three four as you see by the white square right here one two three four right and then each of the chemical plants are affected by eight 
uh, beacon like speed modules, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this is actually 10. It's actually 10, it's not a huge deal. You can't go like faster than you want, right? So it doesn't matter. Uh, but these ones have eight each. So you got one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four for the top one. And it keeps on going. Like for the bottom one, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? And it's the same thing for the, the middle one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There we go. So each of them have have eight affecting them so how we did the pipe work here was i had the petroleum always funneling to the middle for for each of the refineries as well as you know right here uh the light oil to petroleum would funnel to the middle and then branch out as for the heavy oil the heavy oil i would go underground for both go underground on the near side and then what it would do is it would go straight into heavy to light oil cracking. And I'd have the light oil kind of go on the outside and join up and have that merge right here. And then go straight into the uh, the petroleum cracking. On this side, it was a little different because you see how everything's, uh, it's not mirrored, right? So it stays on the same um, same side. When you, or when you rotate it, it's not mirrored. So it's like, it's opposite, right? Um, so in this case, I had to kind of do a little bit of a snake thing to, to bring it towards the middle here. And then oil and water is always coming towards the outside. And then oil and water funnel towards the middle to become petroleum, right? They funnel towards the middle into one, one part. So we got the oil on the outside and then oil also here uh, splits off in between uh, each of the two here. And then we got water coming in from underneath. Now, if you look at the water um, water stat here on the screen, it's saying for one belt, we need 380.616 units of water per second. So for each of these big columns, we have to double that, keep in mind. So that is what, 600, uh, 760? 760, right? Um, actually, maybe an easier way to explain that to find out how much water we need. We're producing eight full belts, right? Eight full belts. So we need to multiply this number by eight. So let's just round it up to 400, make it a nice round number. So 400 times eight is the same as eight times four, which is 32 times 100. So 3,200, right? Now, if we look at our water pumps, our water pumps, where are they? This is the worst part about Factorio is finding everything right here. Um, water pumps. Can I not? Oh, I got to build it over water. Dang it. Can I like use it as a. Oh, there we go. See, if I highlight over it, pumping speed 1200 per second, right? So how many water pumps then do we need to fulfill 3200? So it's just shy of three water pumps right? Because three water pumps would be 3,600. So what I did here was I brought in six lanes of water. I don't, I mean, obviously we only need three. So then these three lanes right here go up. I have one splitting off here to this water lane and then the next three, you know, moving over here. Then um, that first one splits off. I have it, you know, feeding into both as well. So both help splitting off. It's almost like a waterfall effect, right? And then I cut off that one, keep going, because that one uh, supplies two. So it wasn't like a, a full, full water belt because this section and this section here um, are fulfilling, I think three belts. Yeah, three belts worth of, of plastic so that we need 1.2 water pumps so it's it's one one lane wouldn't be enough to fill so that's why i had the the waterfall going on over here so then we have another 0.8 or i have another waterfall i think i just keep on water falling as i keep going and then have the last one on its own but yeah i mean that's that's our water setup so i think what's left to do now and i had I had three more pumps here just in case I wanted to uh, add like another stamp another one of these down next to it, right? I just kind of 
made some room for it just in case. I think what I would do with the water is probably bring it down the middle somehow instead of uh, undergrounding it like through here. I don't know. That's I haven't decided yet. We haven't crossed that bridge yet of adding on to it. So take everything like that with a with a grain of, grain of salt. Um, what else do I need to explain? I went over. Oh, the the plastic bars themselves. So we need in the in the factory calculator it says that we need six point eight. Right now I have eight factories. Right, if we go to deconstruction planner highlight, I have eight of them. Right, so six point eight rounded up is seven. If you're, what, if you're going in a straight line like this, it's really hard to split up that seventh that seventh factory evenly among both sides. So I like to do eight. That way you have four factories on one side of the belt, four factories on the other side of the belt. And, we, and we're and we showing that right here, right? So you got the four factories going on the outside of the belt right here. And then it comes in, comes to the inside, and then these four factories going on the outside of the belt right here. Now, the reason that we need the different splitters or not the different splitters the different inserters if i change this view to instead of like 45 units per second if i just change it to one plastic bar factory you'll be able to see the output of each of the of each individual factory right so if you look at the items per second you see 6.63 items per second of plastic bar is produced and 2.55 coal is consumed so i got i got two um whoops i got two i got one fast inserter for each of the uh for each of the plastic bars which i think actually one plastic inserter might be might be not enough hold on let me look let me look at something real quick okay so if you look at this screen right here that i'll screenshot you see that fast inserters as well as the, the filter inserters have a chest to belt throughput of 6.43 items per second. Now the, re the reason that, um, that that might be lower than chest to chest items per second is because you have to wait till the belt passes like underneath you, right? Like if you're placing three items or six items, you have to wait till those items go from underneath you until you place the rest right so you're not placing all six at one point like you are in a chest or all 12 or whatever so that's why it's a little less than the than the chest to chest because you have to have that that weight a little bit and you see it very much more so in the stack inserter because there's more items in the hand right so the chest to chest um items per second throughput for a stack inserter is 27.69 but going to the belt is 13.85 right it's was that like half exactly half yeah i think it's exactly half because you have to wait for those items to go underneath you as you place the 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 product onto the belt so that's why so the throughput that we need for the um coal is 2.55 per second for one factory so that's why the the, the stack inserters is completely fine um for the or sorry the that's why the the fast inserter is completely fine for the stack inserter now you'll see here that i have stack inserters here for the uh, plastic bars for some of them and the reason that is is because some some like these ends here will stack up product because like it said, it, like it shows we needed, was it 6.7 or just shy of seven factories in order to um, to reach max throughput. So the reason why I had the stack inserters here at the end is because this is the one filling in the gaps. So if, it, if there is like a gap of one, two, three, whatever, you want it to fill the entire gap and have it push aside all the other product. That way it, it completely, um, it completely saturates the belt and it's it's easier to do that with like a, a large quantity in um in an inserter's hand instead of the three that comes in a fast inserter so if you're holding out 12 you can easily fill out the gaps and then once this this like first inserter goes back to fill up this second inserter is there as like a backup so the reason why i have the stack inserters is to um 
is to fill the gaps like i said like i just said and when needed it's like an extra cushion um and then you have the same thing going uh going down and then it goes into this eight by eight balancer and then goes into the train station now the thing with the train station and how this is set up is we don't have an output lane right so in my in my in my stream playthrough we had a highway coming down like right here so this just went all the way down to the highway and then it would go up in this case i think we will have another highway going north south in the future um just to kind of go up into this narrow section and then come back down instead of you know keep on going but in the meantime we don't have an output for this thing so i think what i'm going to do is just loop it up and then have that be a temporary a temporary fix right so let's just go ahead and do that make sure that everything fits okay we'll loop it up and then we'll connect it to the highway i think in, in this case all i need is just a simple all i need is just a simple right turn because it's obviously not going to turn left because it's not going over there um so we'll do that we'll add that and that and that should be good because these guys are already going to go out this way uh what is this demand coal do i not have my coal train set up i should uh huh. I don't have demand or coal. Oh, this has to be named demand or coal. Sorry, guys. Demand or coal. There we go. Now, now it's gonna start. Now it's gonna start coming. I have it named slightly different in my uh, stream playthrough. Now, before we do anything, we need to to do our water. So let's get rid of a bunch of these trees. Trees are a nuisance. Trees are the real enemy in Factorio. We'll, uh, we'll bring our Spidertrons. Oh, crap. Dang it. I'm controlling the wrong one. Okay. Here's the fix for it. You uh, shift right click to clear that. You assign it to this. You control right or control left click to go to assign it to follow that. Then you shift right click to unassigned and then you reassign it back to your leader. There you go. Okay, so these guys. Can go here. Hmm. How do I want this to work? Uh, I might need I might need a pump right here. Yeah, I'll need a pump right here. And then let's have, yeah, this thing right here. Okay. So I'll have a pump just to keep the flow up. And I'm doing it on all six just because like, I don't know, because I want to, all right? It's my, it's my, it's my YouTube video. I decide, it's my rules. I'm the captain now. Uh, <laughs> sorry, a little tangent. Um, okay, so we're gonna keep on going here. We're gonna have to cross another another highway lane. And let's add one more. And then let's just keep on doing this all the way down. And we'll add another pump here at the end of the highway. We'll have the robots clear the trees. That way we can focus on what we need to do to work. Let's see. It's going to be the best right here. Okay, so this, come on, select it. There you go. This will get deleted. We can go ahead and copy this part. There you go. And then copy these again. Oh crap. I didn't know that that'd be that big of an issue. Hold on, let's try this. There we go.
Okay, so now this is gonna be a little bit of an issue. We're gonna need to do a turn. So let's delete all of this. This is gonna be our turn this way. And I wanna make sure that we see the same exact thing. There we go. It's a nice, it's a nice right angle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna copy it and find those angles right here. Nice. And then what we need to do here is just connect it like that. And then I'm gonna go down and then across. I'm gonna try to do another another pump real quick. Try to get this in line. Let's do another pump. Mm. Let's do it there. There we go. Let's actually shift and scroll down and do this one instead. Okay, let's go back to this one now. There we go. One more. Let's actually delete that. Uh, is this a, what, is, what kind of turn is this? I don't know, but I'm gonna see if I can, if I can copy it. And I think I can. I'm the best. Around. Boom. And then we're just gonna mimic that. Good. Nice. Okay. Now this is gonna be our water pumps. Water pumps gonna go here. Uh crap. There, 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 and Do I have any stone on me? I don't, not for landfill, dang it. Okay, I guess we'll just have to make do with this and that. Okay, let's get our regular pipes, connect everything like this. Boom, boom, boom. Gotta connect this one. And then we also gotta connect this one, but we gotta do it a little bit sneaky sneaky like because it or else it'll, it'll touch boom okay so we got our water oh and we got our plastic nice okay so the water's going in um obviously it's not going to be it's not going to be full belts because we don't have our speed beacons here and we don't have our product productivity modules but this is essentially the build right this is going to be the build that makes eight full plastic belts per second and i'm freaking excited um and I like this because we added, you know, this little slip lane here that goes through the middle and then it goes onto each side. So that means we can rotate this and have this mirrored on the other side. Um, I'm not going to do it yet because we're not even going to be using our um, our eight belts of plastic. If we need that going forward, we, we can scale up. That's the biggest thing that I like in my designs is scalability i like being able to just add more onto it in order to add more throughput instead of having like four different copper smelting or iron smelting facilities right i like it all in one place so for example you know this iron plate right now we have you know two columns going up into two trains this is easily expandable you can just plop a bunch down we have these slip through lanes um, we're, we can add more slip through lanes just to ease in the throughput of the trains. Um, but yeah, like especially with nuclear fuel, the nuclear fuel helps a bunch in terms of, you know, the lack of congestion because they accelerate and decelerate super quickly. Like look at that, like they just boom, stopped on a dime, which is awesome. Uh, I think we have, do we have enough time to, to add this uh, station over here? I think we do. 
I think we do. We're going to go all the way back. I'm not going to add the oil just yet because we don't we don't really need it. We don't really need it. We have we have enough oil coming in here. And it's freaking full and uh, the throughput is is not an issue. So we're just going to let this run in the background right now. We got around five five thousand uh, worth of uh, plastic. And then I think in the next episode, we're going to be building our red science. You guys are going to like the red science build. I think it's cool looking. I mean, you probably even more cool looking than this thing. And I don't know. I like I like the look of this. I think it's super clean. You got this right in the middle. Oh, speaking of this, I don't think I went over this. So we have our, our stacker here that goes in, keeps going. Uh, and then it has like a little slip lane, right? Because this is this continues on um, towards future future builds right and then it has its own dedicated section here per um per eight full lanes right so we got a full train of coal coming in and then we have two stacks of tanks here for the oil as a good buffer to to give trains enough time to come in because it's weird tanks and fluids work a weird way if if you have like a thousand oil and it spreads out super thinly it won't it won't run at full capacity even though you have a thousand like that's a lot of oil right we're looking at at the um at the 45 like one full belt of of uh, plastic utilizes 230 um 230 oil per second so having 230 oil per second if you have like 10 grand or 10,000 oil like it's still a lot but spread out across 16 tanks uh it the throughput goes goes down very quickly okay so right here we're we're having our robots deconstruct this which is super satisfying it's awesome i love it um and then let's have oh those robots are gonna take things from us we're gonna have deconstruct these guys as well as this thing and then we want we want our trains um the only thing is i don't want to delete this thing I really don't. I want to I want to eventually have like a monument or something um, at the end of the playthrough. So I don't I don't want to delete this at all. So I think what I'm going to do is we have enough room up here for a couple trains. So I think I might have my stone and stone brick trains come here and then there's a little there's a little lane here, a little avenue that we can that we can use to uh, to let them get through. So let's copy this. Do a little something like that. A little something like that. All right, and we're just gonna add, add the signals. Oh, and the this thing, this thing doesn't need to be here anymore. This can be deleted. So this whole thing can be deleted also as well as this intersection just to clear up clear up the traffic a little bit we don't need this intersection at all anymore let's actually un undo our robots so that those can uh, deconstruct that for us and then we'll also have them take this apart perfect awesome all right Let's head back up and start building these stations. Um, how do I want to do this? I probably want to split this off right at the beginning here, just to have those two trains just go in, right? So I'll have this train here. I'm gonna move this regular signal back a bit, and then I'm gonna have another train continue down. That's probably overkill, but that and then like this so now let's turn our robots back on we'll have the end of the line be there and then chain signals be in between here perfect and we're going to use the template of the of the stations that we already have also let's just use this too 
copy paste. We'll have up on there and then change signals at the beginning. We will use, since we'll, we'll use the template for this right here. Since both of these guys are outputting one belt and they're pretty compact, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we need a, oops, where are we? We need a left unloader as well as a right unloader. So our right unloader off the right side is gonna be this guy. Oh, but it's gonna be reversed, hold on. So we need this, this guy. Let's put our stations down first so that we know where we're at. Paste. Boom, like so. Oh crap. I don't want I don't want the, the rails with it. Then let's just do the inserters. There we go. Awesome. So that's gonna come out the end here. So, perfect. Now, let's do the same thing with this guy without the rails. Amazing, awesome. And have this guy come down as well. Perfect. And then last but not least, we need to add the supply and demand for both stone brick and, and stone ore. So let's use these guys and set our power poles. So this is going to be demand or stone, I believe. All right, stones on the inside. No, we want this a stone brick. Demand. Do I have a stone brick? I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't think I do. Demand stone brick. And then this is going to be demand or stone perfect let's actually go ahead and copy the coal output because the coal output is going to be the same numbers we just need to change the signal so for those of you that don't know this is going to be the max the max amount that the chest can hold minus the stone that we read already from the chest which is what we already have um, is equaling what we need, right? So the max of what we can hold minus what we have is equal to what we need. And then we take in what we need, divide by train size, and that output is how many trains that we need. Um, let's take the red wire, red wire here, and then boom. And then also have this here. Enable disable when stone is greater than zero. All right, so we're gonna get stone trains in pronto. That's good. Now let's do the same thing with stone brick. Stone brick is gonna have a stack size of 100, just off of memory. So it's gonna be the same as the steel. So we wanna copy down the steel numbers, but just change the, um, change the symbol. So the symbol here, it's the same thing, right? The Since it's a stack of 100, it's actually double of what the ore is. So instead of 115, 200, it's 230, 400. And then that's the max number minus what we have in stone brick is what we are requesting or what we need. And then take that input, what we need, divided by the stack size. Um, since it's double what the what the ore stack size is or stack size is 50 this stack size is 100 the train size is doubled so instead of 16,000 it's 32,000 
So take the stone brick, divide by 32,000. That's how many trains that we are requesting. So we are requesting, and let's connect this up with a red wire. Red wire equals demand. You look at our output signal, that's seven trains of demand. We'll connect our red wire to our neural network and you see that pop up down there, right? We have seven stone brick uh, d being demanded in red and seven being supplied in green. And then we will connect our green wire down to our station. Once again, uh, having this color be different connected to the stations is important because we want this number connected to the station to be local um, just to this station and not global because global you can run into some ne negative numbers and have you know that value be zero as trains are en route because as trains are en route you subtract one from both supply and demand so there is a case that a train is en route and then it turn and then that demand number or demand value goes to zero and then once it goes to zero this station here turns off so we don't want it to turn off before trains actually get there so that's why we change this the wire color to go to the station so that it's independent from this global red wire right local green global red and then on a supply station it's switched because the green wires are going to be reading so on a supply station the green is global and the red wire is local right so that's that's what you want to do if you want to follow along and do this same type of uh the same type of method uh why is this why is this acting like you can go on both both sides i don't understand that okay well i don't know we'll figure it out where are these guys no path to demand or why not why not why not no path path is right here bro i don't know what you're talking about What the hell? No path to demand or let's let's uh let's bug let's bug fix fix this. Okay, so you're going down here. You're following along. You turn left. Turn left. You can go on either end, right? So you can if you turn left you can go on either either end here either lane you follow this highway down and go on either lane again turn right come on all the, all the way down you're already on either lane which is good keep going you can even switch lanes here so you can go on either lane yeah so why are you showing no path you little bee. Oh, is it this? That's why. Now you should be able to go. Yeah, it was that little that little signal right there. Do I have any more right here? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah, it was that little signal that was messing it up. Okay, so now we just need to take our Spidertrons, go up. Actually, I don't even think we need to go up. I think we can do it from here. Um, these trains, oh yeah, yeah, we can do it from here. Okay, so these trains are gonna start at Depot. At Depot Stone? Oh, I didn't even name the stations. Okay, so Depot Stone Brick, boom. There we go. Go to depot stone brick. Wait until circuit condition green signal is equal to three, right? That's our three checks, supply, demand, and the train ahead of it is already gone. Then you go to supply stone brick until full cargo. And then you go to demand stone brick until empty cargo as simple as that now before we go automatic i'm gonna shift right click and paste it to each of the other trains there good to go let's press play awesome 
let's press play here awesome that's good to go press play here and then press play here perfect so, so this is going to start getting loaded this is then going to start consuming uh we should have stone already here oh yeah we do but let's go ahead and add everything that we need uh i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna have all the items come through here there we go so that's our stone stone brick is coming shortly as well our stone our stone brick should be coming boom right on cue love that awesome and now that stone brick will help us create what are we missing here that needs stone brick i mean rails rails need stone not stone brick but stone uh we had some that were that was recycled away which is fine i was keeping us over um but we also need this uh this concrete that requires the stone brick as well as you know walls and all that stuff so it's a small thing we don't really need stone brick yet for science because you stop making science for right now um yeah i think that's going to be the end of this this episode we did i think we got some good progress we finally got our plastic i think we got oh we got a full trains worth nice uh i'm gonna need to save up and kind of let this running on idle for a bit in order to save up on the uh on the modules that we need uh we need a lot of modules i really want to out start outposting modules but in order to do that we need red circuits and we need blue circuits um but on that note i think in the next episode we're going to be good to start working on red circuits so keep an eye out for that that's going to be i think our next build you guys are going to like my red circuit build i know i keep on saying that but you guys are um as always if you enjoy the content be sure to smash that like button click the subscribe button as well if you haven't already and that little notification bell down there at the bottom keeps you up to date with all new content that comes to the channel if you have any questions comments concerns critiques criticism anything leave it down in the comments down below or just if you want to say hi if you want to say hi i like saying hi i'm a friendly guy um leave it in, in the comments down below and I, i'll get back to it as soon as i can if you want to hang out with me um while we play some fun video games i stream every thursday and sunday over at twitch.tv slash i stream a lot of factorio mostly i do stream other strategy games not just factorio so go ahead hang out with me over there it's an awesome time we're building an awesome community i'd love for you to join us and that's gonna be it for me so thank you so much again for joining me and uh i'll see you next time have a good one peace